I don't know if we really touched on it yet, but why exact like all the benefits and why we're going with synthetic standing rigging and there's a there's a lot of them and then there's some disadvantages and there's some rules you definitely have to follow with it but I think it's worth it for us and I wonder to myself if we had like a mono hull where we're limited at hull speed if it'd be worth it for that kind of boat and I think it depends but for us the lightweight is especially the lightweight aloft is awesome and you still get that benefit on a monohull if you have less weight aloft you heal over much less you stand up you sail a little bit faster but for us just having the weight just off the boat will make a you know make a difference we're gonna save like over 100 pounds probably the do-it-yourself is amazing it's so easy to do ourselves. and then further on that point is we can bring a ton of extra ducks Dyneema ducks and if we ever have a chafed shroud or a broken shroud or anything, we could just make a new one no matter where we are. Like, we could be way out in the outer, outer islands, not have access to any stainless steel wire or swage machines or fittings or whatever, and we just make our own shrouds easily. And then there's no weight disadvantage of carrying that on the boat. It weighs practically nothing. So that's another one. Uh, another big one is the inspectability. And that just means that, like with stainless steel wire, you don't really know what's going on on the inside. There could be corrosion on the inside. And yeah, you can see broken wires, but the professionals say if you see a broken wire on your stainless steel standing rigging, it's already kind of too late. I think it's uh, Brian Toss is a famous rigger, and I think he says it's like waving a piece of paper in a room to see if it's on fire. And, and if your paper catches on fire, that means the room's on fire, but it's already too late, like, you're already risking it. Just a funny thing, but, uh, but yeah, that's the thing with synthetic rigging is you can inspect it. Like, if it starts to chafe or it starts to get weak, it'll, it'll start to get fuzzy. And there's so much extra strength built into this, you have a lot of time to be able to replace it or fix what's causing that chafe before you lose enough strength to actually be at risk. And you can visually see that. Like I said before, the only two things that will affect it are chafe and UV damage and uh, chemical, it's pretty chemical inert. I don't know of any chemicals that will degrade this material. Corrosion is another huge reason we are using, it could be better than stainless steel wires, just it'll never corrode. Oh yeah, and I also said before about chafe and how you have time to fix something before you lose enough strength to actually be at risk is because it's so oversized, like it's one size up from our stainless steel wire which was 8 millimeter, this is 9 millimeter, and but the strength is, I forget the numbers, it's like double the strength, the actual breaking load of that same eight millimeter wire and that's because we size it for creep which means that most of the loads we're putting on this rigging are going to only be 10 or 20 percent of the braking strength but as long as you keep our loads under that you don't get any creep in this line once you start going over those loads and you start hitting significant loads in relation to its overall braking strength then you'll start to get a little bit of creep which is permanent elongation of the actual line. So it won't corrode, it's easily inspectable, it's light, it's do-it-yourself do it friendly. Cost, so the material is a little bit more expensive, you would say, right? Yeah, but at we the gotta same do a whole cost analysis as well because it probably is slightly more expensive than stainless steel wire. But at the same time, we're not paying a rigger to come and do it, which if we were doing wire, we would kind of have to, Yeah, right? definitely a good point. And once you have all the hardware for this stuff, whether you're using Caligo or like Kraken Structures, Dead Eyes, or either one, um, once you have that hardware, if you were ever to replace your rigging, you don't ever have to buy that hardware again. So probably that next time around, it would be cheaper. Whereas most uh, stainless steel standing rigging, you would have to get new uh, pieces swaged on, new turnbuckles and things like that every however many, 10, 20 years. Yeah, so we'll have to do a cost analysis. And that's the thing, like, so if you're on a monohull or a boat where you won't see a huge amount of benefit from the weight, because you still do get a benefit from the weight not being on the boat, or especially not being aloft on the monohull. If that wasn't a value to you, would this still be valuable? It just depends how much... Um, time and money you have. Well, it depends how much time and money you have, how much uh, the do-it-yourself aspect is a value, how much the weight is a value to you. Um, it's just a balance. And even if you don't want to do it yourself, 
if you still like the other aspects of synthetic rigging, like you can get Kraken structures or you can get Caligula uh, Marine to splice splice you all your shrouds. In that scenario, I probably recommend Kraken Structures. Luke is very detailed focus, focused completely 100% on the project, at least with us he was. Um, and just very, like, thinks about every single aspect of every single shroud to make sure it's gonna go right. Um, so if I were to ha have anyone splice anything for me, he, you know, he'd be my choice. 